session is about security culture. Um, now, we live in an age of escalating political persecution, and we shouldn't expect that to go away. We have to figure out ways to deal with it. Um, for environmentalists in particular, the last 10 years have seen uh, escalating arrests and surveillance through things like the Green Scare, which we'll talk about in more detail tomorrow. Um, but of course, this is something that applies to political activists uh, throughout history um, of all kinds of political backgrounds. Uh, and mostly what's changed in the last 10 or 20 years is the uh, ubiquity of, of, of surveillance. Um, and, you know, it's really easy in a, in a kind of surveillance state where you feel like maybe you can always be watched or tracked to become very paranoid. Um, and so security culture is a, a cultural practice that we adapt to help deal with that and to make ourselves uh, have safer communities and be more effective as activists. So what is security culture, first of all? Um, the uh, handbook, there's a great handbook called Security Culture, a Handbook for Activists, which has kind of been the classic for a while, which you can find online really easily. And they define security culture as uh, a culture where people know their rights and assert them. Um, so these are certain practices that we follow that make political communities safer. Um, they're based on looking at how, uh, you know, different governments and police and intelligence agencies have tried to persecute or disrupt uh, social movements and political movements in the past, and it's an intelligent response to that. And in part because of that, security culture is, is something that we adapt as time goes on, so we actually you know, have to pay attention to how those in power are trying to repress political movements and make appropriate adaptations. And you know, the idea of these uh, kind of guidelines or rules that we're going to talk about is not to make you more paranoid. Um, because, you know, we do have to think about uh, the conversations that we're having and what we're saying, especially when we're saying things about other people. Um, but the point of that awareness is not to make us paranoid. It's actually to use kind of a simple set of rules and guidelines that we share with other people in our communities uh, to make us less paranoid. And this stuff is specifically for kind of above ground activists. So obviously anyone who's working in any kind of, you know, clandestine or underground organization is going to want to use uh, a much tighter set of kind of rules and guidelines that they would come up with uh, themselves. And that, uh, you know, tomorrow there's a, another session that talks about organizational structures. And we'll really get in more then into the, the distinction between above ground and underground groups and how they kind of organize differently and the different rules that they might follow. So uh, the don'ts. And these are kind of the, the core of, of security culture is what not to talk about. Um, and there are certain things that we don't talk about to make it uh, harder for those in power to, to you know, arrest people or to disrupt movements. Because in the Green Scare, for example, there were people who were arrested for actually carrying out illegal acts. And then there were people who were arrested just for, for talking about illegal actions uh, or for you know, supposedly planning them. So there are six things that you should not talk about uh, in security culture. So number one is your involvement or someone else's involvement with an underground group. You shouldn't talk about someone else's desire to get involved with such a group. That's really important. You know, you should speak for yourself um, in general. Um, you should not ask other people if they're a member of an underground group. You shouldn't uh, talk about your or someone else's participation in illegal actions. Um, you shouldn't talk about someone else's advocacy for those actions, um, and you shouldn't talk about plans for future actions. So, you know, what this is all really based on is, is need to know. Um, that if someone's going to decide that they want to carry out an act that is illegal or that might be illegal for political reasons, then whoever is not participating in that act doesn't need to know about it. And if other people know about it, then that puts them at risk as well. Um, and so, what this usually means in particular is that you shouldn't talk about you know, the specifics of illegal actions. So don't talk about specific people, specific places, specific times, all of these things. And of course, there's a, you know, dis we don't want to become so kind of uh, paranoid or afraid of talking about these things that we don't talk about supporting them at all. Because you know, as the saying goes, if voting changed anything, it would be illegal. 
uh, resistance movements and social movements throughout history have used a wide variety of illegal actions, um, including civil disobedience, to, uh, to you know, fight for, for justice and economic equality. Um, and so whenever you're struggling against, an, an, against some kind of entrenched elite, um, if your tactics are effective, they're, if they're not already illegal, they'll, they'll make them illegal. Um, and so, you know, it's still acceptable and, you know, even encouraged for people to speak out uh, in support of, of illegal actions in general, to say, you know, that we need to, if we're living in Germany, that, you know, it's okay to smuggle people who are being persecuted out. And it really depends on the, the political kind of climate at the time and on your own personal risk levels that, you know, if you're someone who is in a precarious situation, you know, in terms of uh, immigration status or various other things, then, you know, you're probably going to moderate how much you actually want to speak openly about some of these things. But in terms of security culture, it's not banned to, you know, say, I think that we need to fight back in a more specific way or a more effective way. Um, and civil disobedience is kind of on, can be on the edge of this, right? Because usually if someone, if a bunch of people are going to get together and, and block a road or, you know, have a sit-in in a segregated cafe, um, that's people usually planning en masse to talk about it um, and to carry it out. And if the object is that you're going to go and people are going to maybe get arrested and kind of confront the police in, in an act of civil disobedience, then that's a little bit different and that's totally above ground. And of course, there's one kind of general rule that, that always applies, and that's don't talk to cops. So, you know, these guidelines for not talking about illegal activities of other people, that's kind of within our own communities and within people, you know, who are basically on the same page as us. If it's the police or, you know, an intelligence agent or someone like this who's obviously not on our side, then just don't talk to them at all. Um, and sometimes they come by surprise, you know, FBI or CSIS agents have been known to show up at people's houses or at their work and to ask them questions. Um, but it's very simple, just say, I don't want to talk to you, you know, no comment, I'm not interested in talking to you. Um, you can get their names so you can see what they're kind of interested in. Um, if you want to pass that on to other people in your community as kind of a warning, like, you know, these, these, the FBI or whatever is poking around and trying to gather information. But don't give them anything. Um, if you're arrested by the police, then the, the kind of general rule is that you have to give them your, your name, your address, and your birth date um, under the law. And that's mostly because you're probably not going to get released until you give them at least that. Uh, and, but you shouldn't tell them any more uh, than that. And the police are really effective at using kind of different tricks and, and, and threats and traps to get people to talk um, under interrogation or even in a, what is not apparently interrogation, what seems like a friendly little chat, a friendly interview, but kind of segues at some point into something else. Um, there's a really good video on, on YouTube uh, so just search for Don't Talk to Cops. It's kind of a two-part video that has a, a law professor speaking and then a police officer speaking. And this is not like a political video. It's a general video for people uh, saying there's you know, no good reason to talk to police. There's no good reason to give an interview to police. And basically that they'll use lies and kind of twist words and do various other things to... Uh, and trap people into giving information that can then be used against them in, in court or in other things. And so if you want to get learn more about those kind of specific techniques, then that's a good place to start.